All right, hello, my name is Gomer Joseph. I hope you've all been having a great day so far. Welcome back to another True Crime Tuesdays video. If you are new, I welcome you. Before I discuss today's case, I would like to mention my Christian Suspense book series titled Never As It Seems. The first book in the series is available on Amazon and you can read it on any device on the Kindle app for free. But, you know, this is the first in the series and the series is continuing to grow. So right now, book number four of the Never As It Seems series titled Walking Through the Flames is also available on Amazon for pre-order and the official release date will be September 6th and I am very excited. Not only that, but I do have another book series titled The Juliet Clark book series, which is about a Haitian-American teen sleuth who happens to be a successful YouTuber. The first book in the series is titled Murder at Heart. The links will be in the description box if you are interested. Today, I'll be discussing the solved disappearance of Carlina White. Now, I remember hearing about this case clear as day. Now, Carlina went missing in the 80s and I wasn't born then, but her being found is what I remember. This story has stood out to me for years and I don't think it will ever stop standing out. I encourage you all to do your own research with this case and not to just look at my video for all of the information. Here we go. Carlina White was born on July 15th, 1987 in Harlem, New York to parents Joy White and Carl Tyson. Now back then, Joy White was 16 years old and she was dating Carl who was 22 years old. Now again, Joy, Carlina's mother, is very young to be having a child, and when her parents found out, they were upset at first, but, you know, they were very supportive since she decided to keep the baby. Now, when Carlina was born, Joy and Carl were overjoyed to have her in their lives and were looking forward to raising their daughter. As for the rest of the family, they could not keep their eyes off of baby Carlina. Now, baby Carlina, she was described as a girl who was pretty, was always smiling, but would cry for hours, though. When Carlina was 19 days old, uh, it was August 4th of that year, so she had a fever which was growing worse, so Joy and Carl, you know, worried young parents, they drove Carlina to the hospital. Now, this fever was due to some post- birth complications, so they had to go ahead and keep the baby overnight at the hospital, which really upset Joy. And again, you know, it's already, the whole pregnancy already took a toll on young Joy anyway, and as to see your baby sick and you can't even bring your baby home, I can imagine, you know, it will be very tough on her. So a woman who Joy thought was a nurse, you know, this woman noticed that Joy was upset, she came up to her put her arm around her and told the young mother not to cry and that everything would be okay, which was something that Joy appreciated. Joy was also advised to leave the hospital and got some rest home, thinking that Carlina was safe at this hospital. But the fact was that baby Carlina was not safe at all because the quote unquote nurse was not a nurse at all. Later that morning, Joy was awakened by two detectives who gave her the news that no parent should ever hear. They gave her the news that Carlina was taken. Now, Joy, she was absolutely, like, you know, she had so much anxiety because your child's missing, but she was absolutely heartbroken and upset. And, you know, once again, you know, especially as a teen mom who only had her baby for, like, 19 short days. Like, I can't imagine the pain that she was enduring during that time. After getting this news, she, you know, goes on the phone. She starts, starts screaming, starts crying on the phone as she tells Carl that Carlina was kidnapped from the hospital. Now, back at the hospital, Joy and Carl noticed that police were surrounding the place. They were everywhere, but they didn't have any news or updates to share with the young parents. Something clicked inside of Joy's mind. She remembered this supposed nurse and realized that it had to be that lady who took baby Carlina. Now, other people, they did see the woman in the hospital. Parents and I guess other um, patients thought that she was a nurse, but the workers thought that she was a visitor. 
Now this was the 80s, there were still, you know, security cameras back then, but the sad thing is that these security cameras were not working. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, what was the point of having them in the first place if not gonna work? But bottom line is that this lady was looking for a baby to take. Joy described the woman who she encountered, so a sketch was made. And, you know, after the sketch was created, there was a woman who seemed to have resembled it, but this lady she, they questioned had an alibi, leaving the police with no leads. And since the police had no leads, the parents were upset and felt like the police weren't doing enough to find baby Carlina. To Joy and Carl, Carlina seemed to have been forgotten in the public eye, but Joy made sure to spread awareness of her daughter's disappearance every chance, every single chance that she got, causing many sleepless nights. And obviously that's understandable because, you know, again, you only, you, you carry your baby for nine months, first of all, and then you only get to have her for 19 days, only to have her snatched away from you. And, you know, it's understandable that it was very difficult for her to sleep because she has no b idea where her baby is. Now, while the parents are doing their best to find their daughter, their daughter is with a woman named Anne Petway, the kidnapper. She took Carlina on a train with her and took the baby to Bridgeport, Connecticut. Now, when she left Bridgeport, the family believed that she was pregnant, but unfortunately, she lost that baby. But, you know, instead of just mourning that loss like, you know, a regular woman would, she was cruel enough to steal someone else's child and raise her as her own. Now, Anne would actually go on to have another baby when Carlina turned 11. So, you know, if the whole point was to, you know, just have... A child first of all like I understand you know adoption costs can be pretty high and you know it doesn't seem like Anne really came for money I understand that you know adopting a child can be such a difficult process but it's like I mean just taking somebody else's child when you were gonna have another baby anyway it's just I just have no words for it but you know let's go ahead and backtrack you know after Anne brings Carlina back to Brit Bridgeport. So Bridgeport, that's where Anne's family was, and Anne's family thought nothing of it for her to bring a baby with her because she left Bridgeport, Connecticut pregnant and then came back home with a baby after being gone for months. Anne named baby Carlina Nedra, and the rest of the family, which was a large one, actually called Carlina Nettie as a nickname. And, you know, Nettie... Carlina now goes by Nettie, so when you hear me say Carlina and Nettie, I'm, I'm talking about the same person, obviously, but as long as this makes sense, Carlina, she goes by Nettie, so most of the time I'll be calling her Nettie. So, Nettie loved the family that she grew up with since it was a large one. There were plenty of parties growing up, cookouts, and she was always hanging out with her cousins. Nettie was described as someone who loved dancing. She loved her solitude and she truly enjoyed writing poems. Now, Anne, even though she raised Nettie as, you know, a strict parent, even though she wasn't her parent, Anne would get into trouble with the law every now and then. So at that time, Nettie didn't know why she would stay, you know, she, why she would be away from who she thought was her mother, but, you know, while Anne was dealing with legal troubles, Anne's mother would take care of Nettie whenever those situations arose. Now, back to, you know, Carlina's family. So, the parents, the family, they sued the hospital because, you know, it was their responsibility to make sure that the baby was safe like there's no ifs and buts about it it was their responsibility to make sure that you you know that when they left the baby there the parents were supposed to take the baby back home nothing else was supposed to happen to the baby but 
they won a settlement with the hospital and after winning this settlement they set aside a trust fund for baby Carlita when you know she grew up hoping that she would be found and they never forgot about their missing baby over time Joy and Carl did break up got married to different people had more kids but still had this hole in their lives because Carlina was not with them years and years go by Carlina is still missing but of course being known as Nettie she has no idea that she's missing so when 2005 came around Nettie is like 17 years old and she got pregnant by a guy who she was in a relationship with and you know unlike most 17 year olds um Nettie was actually pretty excited to be a mother but you know since she was planning on keeping the baby she needed health insurance but she had no health insurance and as y'all are keeping what keeping up with the story I'm pretty sure that you guys know why she didn't have health insurance so Nettie asks Anne like you know who she thought was her mother about her birth certificate so she could get some health insurance and told Nettie that you know she would take care of it and everything but it was taking too long so Nettie decided to look for it herself and as she kept searching throughout the house she took what looked like a birth certificate and she went to this office she went to this office to get the health insurance when she went to this office and handed it to this office worker Nettie was blown away when she was told to leave before they would call the cops on her because Nettie was told that the birth certificate that she handed in was a fake one. Nettie, who is, you know, surprised and I'm pretty sure upset and furious and frustrated, she confronts Anne telling her what happened. So Anne decides to tell Nettie that she was not her real mother, but Anne, instead of, you know, being honest and truthful, actually doing the right, instead of doing the right thing, she tells Nettie this made-up story saying that she was abandoned as a baby and decided to take her in without, you know, going through an adoption, a legal adoption process. And when the truth about Nettie's parentage came up, this surprised the entire Netway family, but you know, since they were still very large and loving, they still accepted Nettie as their own. Now, Nettie, she wasn't really buying this whole abandoned at birth story, so she kept asking Anne, but she basically she was basically, you know, made to run in circles with the um, explanations that Anne was giving her, and. Because of this, you know, since Nettie wasn't getting the answers that she wanted, this got her involved with trying to solve her own mystery, the mystery of who she actually was. Now, when Nettie gave birth, she gave birth to a daughter, and a few years after giving birth, the year is like 19, is 19, 2009, and she moved to Atlanta. Georgia to basically have this new start. Motherhood made Nettie push harder to find out where she came from, so she asked Anne's sister Cassandra to help her, and Cassandra was happy to help. Nettie decided to go on the internet and look up news articles about missing children around the year of her birth. Now, she couldn't really, you know, say her birth, her specific birth date, because the day that she was told was her birthday was not her birthday and she eventually found the picture now when she looked at this picture she was unsure if it was her but she decided to keep a close eye on it at first Nettie would call other agencies but they weren't helpful in figuring out if this baby picture is the same is you know her as a baby so her last resort was to call the missing and exploited children i guess you would call it an organization she called missing and exploited children and explained how she didn't know who she was and came across this article and had a feeling that she was abducted as a baby now when you come to that realization like this is where i guess this is where this story always caught my attention because you 
spend most of your life believing that this one per person is your parent, but then not only do you find out that they are not your biological parent, you find out that they most likely took you from your biological parents. So you've been raised by your kidnapper this whole time. Like, I can't imagine, you know, I understand. I mean, she was trying to go ahead and figure out who she was, but the emotional turmoil that she had to go through in order to find the truth, I just... I just, yeah, it's, it's just unexplainable. It's just unfathomable. So, eventually, on January 4th, 2011, an analyst did their work and eventually confirmed that Nettie, who was 23 years old at this time, was Carlina White. So, after putting two and two together, they informed Joy and Carl that their daughter, after looking for her for over 20 years was finally found and they sent them pictures of Nettie. Now her parents were overwhelmed with emotion because it seemed like after 24 long years they finally found their baby. You know, after getting this news, after getting these pictures, Nettie was able to get in contact with her parents to get to know them a bit. So as you know, after they were talking back and forth on the phone, Nettie decided to fly to meet her parents and the rest of the family, and they truly did have this wonderful reunion. Like I said earlier on in the video, the story was big on the news, and I remember getting a glimpse of it, and, you know, even though the news was, you know, all, you know, her story was all over the news, Nettie was very overwhelmed by it, because, once again, she was somebody who for a good amount of time, like, keeping to herself, and now all this attention is on you, it's, it's a lot to, it's a lot to handle. So, when the Petways found out that Anne kidnapped Carlina, they had mixed emotions, because, you know, they're happy that Nettie found her family, but they were upset about Anne's role in this, and they they just didn't have, like, a solid emotion to just go forward with. So, of course, kidnapping a child is a crime, and people have to be punished for that crime. They have to get arrested for that crime. And police were looking for Anne, but she eventually turned herself in. At first, she pled not guilty. I, I still don't understand how you're gonna plead not guilty. Like, I understand that you, you raised this girl, but she was not yours to raise. So this whole like this whole saying that you're not guilty thing, like you're gonna turn yourself in and like say that you're not guilty, like you literally took somebody's kid and try to claim that kid as your own. But I'm just rambling. Of course, Carlina's parents were not fine with her pleading not guilty. Eventually, Anne would plead guilty to make a deal to serve a lesser sentence, and I'm going to speak more on that pretty soon, so bear with me. Understandably, Nettie had mixed emotions about Anne's arrest, and you know, like, even though she knew that Anne kidnapped her, Anne was still the woman who she knew or thought to be her mother after all of these years and you know these mixed emotions that she felt about joy oh i'm sorry these mixed emotions that she felt about Anne affected nettie's relationships with her parents joy and carl and not only that her relationship with her parents were still pretty uh not good because nettie still you know, saw Anne's family as her own, and that that's understandable because she grew up loving these people. She grew up thinking that she was a part of them, and it's it's not something. Those aren't feelings that just go away. Like, you know, try growing up in like a large family, and you know, just all of a sudden you just want to go ahead and leave, like because. I, again, I'm rambling. Once again, more issues occurred because Joy and Carl, they had financial issues, so they had no choice but to take the money from the trust fund that they left for their daughter Carlina. And 
they felt like that had something to do with the rift, but Nettie states that she did not care about the money at all. When the reunion occurred, there didn't seem to be another one for quite a while, and with this tension, the contact with Nettie and her parents seemed to be less and less. So let's get back to Anne's sentence. So in 2012, Anne Petway was sentenced to 12 years in prison after taking 23 years away from a family's life. Now it's 2021 now, almost 10 years she's been in prison and Anne's gonna be released in two more years. That's gonna be like 2020, no, no, not two more years, three more years or, okay. Two, yep, three more years because it's 2021. So she's gonna be released in like three more years, 2024. Like, it doesn't even feel that long since I first heard about this case. And as you can see, like, I'm not the best with numbers, but you know, time flies. Like, I, I'm i like, I can't believe that in three more years, this woman who tremendously affected so many lives by one single crime she gets to go free in like a few more years but yet you know that's not even that's not even like you're just gonna go ahead and spend half of the time that you took from a family like i just can't i just i just can't because I'm just trying to like trying to like imagine like how would it be like you know I, I would assume that this would make things harder for Carlina once Anne is released. But y'all can go ahead and leave your thoughts about that in the comment section because I'm done. So when I did check about the update between Nettie and her parents, I did find out that she is still in touch with them, which is you know an answer to prayer. But she's still close to the family that she grew up with. And again, that's understandable. Like, it wasn't like she was just gonna shun them away like that, especially when they didn't even know what Anne did all those years ago. They didn't even take part in the kidnapping, so it would make sense for her to stay in contact with them. But she does still have, you know, a very private life far away from the media. And, you know, overall, by God's grace, no one went no one in this situation went their whole lives without finding out what happened to Carlina White all of those years ago. Thank you all for taking the time in your day to watch this video. If you did like this video, please feel free to hit the like button. If you have any thoughts on this case, please leave your thoughts in the comment section. If you'd like to see more videos from me, feel free to subscribe and click the bell to be notified about the next video. If there's a certain true crime case that you'd like me to cover, Go ahead and let me know. I will see y'all for next Shoot Time Tuesdays and I will talk to y'all later.